what I right, bring it. Well, I'll go this time around. Since I, you already answered a couple of my questions, I'm going to have to start off with this. Uh, where has 13 August is a very successful show? We're very sad to see it go, unfortunately. And do you consider yourself personally successful? I mean, I think, I think uh, I'm always trying to go to the next thing, whatever that is, to, to feed my, um, my damaged uh, self-esteem. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, um, it's in, you know in this business, no matter how high you get, there's always Jack Nicholson sitting at the very top. And so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, look, being able to make a living as an actor, being able to pay my bills as an actor, being able to um, send my children to a proper school as an actor, I call that a success. I mean, there's always room for, for more, but um, I, I don't have any complaints that I'm willing to talk about with you right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll go next. Okay. Because um, we're actually at the same website. So oh, okay, cool. Out. Okay. Um, I don't mean any offense to your character by this, but Pete's kind of the dumb one, just comparatively, because yeah. Mike is a brilliant linguist, Artie is Artie, right, Artie right, is right. a genius sure. technologically. Sure, sure. Is, well, let's is, just say he's the less intelligent one. But you do have your Pete Spidey sense. Right. Um, but is it is it ever interesting uh, or challenging to be working uh, and have the script make you sort of dumb down a little, a little bit? You know, the, the thing is, um, I, I, I personally don't see Pete as being dumb, dumb as, as much as I see him. First of all, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have this job if he were dumb. Yeah, if he if he were in, incompetent, he wouldn't be there amongst all the the geniuses, right? Um, you know, I, for me, I think Pete uses that um, as protection. Um, he uses his self sense of humor as protection, and um, and. and um, so I don't ever see him as being dumb. I mean, you know, every once in a while, like we did this episode um, where, you know, we're at the Ren Fair and Pete has a big giant corn on the cob and then in the next thing he's got a big giant turkey leg and, you know, he's all constantly eating and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm Gallagher, you know. Um, but I trust Jack Kenny and Jack, uh, Jack, Although I think he may, this is just a personal opinion and people may disagree, but even though I think Pete's silly at times, I don't ever see him as being dumb. Um, because uh, I, I, I don't think Jack would, because Pete is an extension of Jack. You know? He's an extension of myself, but Jack's not stupid and, and, uh, and I, I don't think Pete is either. So. And again, it was only through comparatively to the no, no, absolutely. I'm around a bunch of geniuses. Yeah, you know? that would be, I would not be able to deal with that. Exactly, exactly. Um, I'd, I'd like to just say that a lot of the emotions, um, not emotions, but like facial expressions, um, are those more scripted or are you just like the king of the uh, I remember there's one scene where you kind of put your face to some glass and go, oh, yeah, yeah. And no, just, that, was, that was me. That was my pitch. I mean, you know, I grew up with uh, Tim Conway, Harvey Corman, Carol Burnett, Abbott and Costello, um, you know, uh, Mel Brooks. I mean, these were all my, you know, um, uh, Saturday Night Live, you know, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. And, um, those were my comedy heroes and then you know as the years went by um, Henry Winkler as the Fonz and then Michael Keat or Michael Keaton and uh, um, Michael uh, Michael the Canadian um, Michael no uh, yeah he is Canadian he's from here I guess uh, My Michael uh, from uh, family family ties he has, um, he has Parkinson. Michael J. Fox. Like, I love my... Sorry, Michael. Uh, uh, you know, um, so I basically am stealing from all of them. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess I've, I've taken... Um, 
the idea that uh, mimicry is the sincerest form of flattery to to a whole other level with Pete. So, it's kind of a downer question, but I apologize. How do you deal with failure? <laughs> with failure? Not well. Um, I, I, uh, it's an interesting question. I, um, <clears throat> I'm not. I grew up wrestling and playing football my whole life, and uh, you know, um, I've I've been taught to to win well and lose well. But um, but failure um, is a, is a, is a more complex uh, uh, proposition, I guess. You know, I mean, I I, I have. I have failed at things, but um, I, I can't think of lots of failed relationships. It's, uh, you know, trying to be facetious and didactic. It's uh, <coughs> sweat socks filled with manure. So, uh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I guess um, I, I try never to fail. And I guess when I do, I... I, I've just been taught to keep going, so I, I can't honestly, you know, think of anything that I've really failed at. So. But you, you're, you're very successful, obviously. Oh, you're thanks. Successful, you know, thanks. You, you love what you do. Thank There's you. always two sides to everything. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, mentioned at the panel earlier, which was delightful, by the way. Right. Um, Thank you. And I'm not going to talk about the nipple thing because that's. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for that, but yes, uh, they mentioned the artifact is splits people into two, and that we're going to see uh, we're going to see Steve flamboyant and the right. opposite. Right. Right, I guess. Is there a chance we might see a a studious and contemplative piece? Never. <laughs> Thank you. Never. I was worried. N never. I mean, that's the beauty of Pete is that he's continued to be. And, you know, I mean, we've gotten complaints, and I've gotten complaints. Like, ah, they would never hire a, they, they, they would never hire a Secret Service agent that was that silly and stupid. It's like, well, you know, what? A, and a Martian would never say that. You know, it's like, it's Warehouse 13, dude. We time travel, okay? So... You know, H.G. Wells is a woman, you know? I mean, Pandora's box is, is real. So, I, you know, I don't know. For me, pe people that, that get that cerebral about it probably aren't really sci-fi fans to begin with, you know? It's like, well, we're just having fun, man, you know? That's what it's about. It's about so everybody can sit down with husbands, wives, kids, everybody can sit down and watch Warehouse 13 and and get it. I guess I'll take the last one then. Um, you know, once this show closes up, are you gonna like in the back of your mind when you take new parts and new shows or new films, are you gonna always compare it to what you had experienced in the past? I think so. Yeah. Um, Especially this one. I mean, we have the Dream Boss. We have the Dream Cast. And I've had Dream Casts before. And I've had Dream Bosses before. But they've never, they've never lasted this long. So take those feelings and compa compound them, you know. And uh, it's going to be, it, this will be with me forever. So. Thanks, you guys.